Hello, everybody. <laughs> There's only one person watching at the moment, so hello to you. <laughs> it's probably me. It's probably the, the viewer is me. Uh, but I thought I'd uh, do another um, live stream of me finishing off this bow icon. I'll give a few people a chance to say hello. And uh, let me know um, you five or six people. <laughs> it's gone up to five. Well done. Uh, if my mic's working and stuff. Uh, you've got a... Uh, you've got me to yourselves. Oh, oh, it's going up slightly. So there we go. Twelve people. Twenty. Oh, okay, there's a few now. There. <laughs> uh, but I did say I'd finish off this bow icon, and um, I started on it, and then I thought, oh, really? I should, I should just go live. And even if only a few people are watching, um, it's on. It's been recorded and so forth. So that's cool. Hello, uh, Francie Hooray. Bl but Bluetooth again. How do you manage to get here so quickly? <laughs> Carl Jennings, Andy S, hello, uh, Canal uh, Multikill, <laughs> Canal Multikill, Joseph Namte, is that right, Lanza, Pan Lanza Pan Panza, <laughs> and uh, Spring Bonnie, nice to see you all, uh, thanks for joining me, uh, so I was just saying that, um, oh there's, there's, there's a few more coming in, that's nice isn't it, <laughs> it makes me feel wanted. Uh, so, uh, as I was saying, uh, I was doing this uh, bow icon, which you can probably see on the thumbnail, I hope you um, saw. If the thumbnail works, I've had loads of problems because I copy and paste the stream uh, thing, which it suggests you, when you create a new stream, you copy it. Uh, and when I copy it, it just copies the thumbnail, even though I put a new one on there. Very frustrating. Oh, very annoying. <laughs> I'll be watching this while I make some hair cards uh, from Sergeant Chili or SGT. Uh, uh, Chile. I'm assuming that was Sergeant. <laughs> Just seeing what people are saying. Uh, thank you very much. Wood texture looks cool. Thanks very much. I, I mean, it's you can't sit fully. There we go. We can sit fully because I've isolated uh, this bit for painting. Yeah, I'm just checking that's working. Undo that. Um, ready for painting. Uh, yeah, the, I'm I'm pleased with the wood texture. Actually, um, to be honest. Um, the um, my lead artist uh, person Chris uh, got back to me about the other icons and said they weren't quite what they were looking for, um, so I'm having to adapt them really slightly. But I think this one's okay because it's quite it's they weren't cartoony enough. Um, they were a bit too uh, what did he call it? He had a special word which I had to look up. Um, <laughs> embarrassing myself now, um, but uh, sort of a bit too intense basically. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the skull had all sort of cracks and dents in it, and he he wanted it to be more cartoony, which made sense actually for the whole look. So I'd obviously gone way too far, uh, so I had to adjust those. Um, so I'm adjusting this one as I go along, and I can see already that there's a slight error here. It sort of wibble wobbles around the place. I added some polys because they might end up using them. Um, for other things so although I say low poly it's getting a bit high poly there but generally the look and feel is the same <laughs> uh, looking good so far thank you Dirk Strider um, hello Jack Amateur uh, thumbnail look good excellent thanks for that yep I just um, I took away the background they didn't like the background too much either uh, which I, I can appreciate I was not a big fan so they've, ch uh, they've changed it around in fact I'm going to hide the background which is this Taurus and this because it probably won't be used. Uh, Michael C, nice to see you again too. <laughs> I had a meeting with my boss on Discord last week regarding his game, and it went very well. Well done, but Bluetooth, good job. <laughs> I'll be watching this while driving my kids to daycare. You cannot watch and drive, Michael Sullivan. <laughs> Maybe just listening. <laughs> uh, Francie Hooray, that's a cool name, isn't it? Uh, Learning a lot with me, thank you very much, that's good to hear. Um, anyway, so uh, spe system specs, I need to put that in the description, don't I? Um, who said that? Uh, Dilip Kumar. Uh, it's a 4th gen uh, i7 processor, so it's quite old now. This is I think, three and a bit years or something like that. And a GTX 1070, which was kindly donated to me by a viewer, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> Uh, just uh, yep uh, um, if you've got any questions then fire away that's kind of why I came online um, because I'm working away here but I keep getting distracted and doing other things and when I'm live streaming I, I sort of have to focus but I also get to chat to lots of people as well and so I can't be distracted as much and it's more fun uh, so um, yeah I, I kind of need to finish this one and I think there's a few things in here that I think would be good tips for people who want to do some um, live 
live painting, uh, hand painted techniques and stuff. So uh, this might be useful to you. Okay, so uh, where am I from? I'm from Ipswich, England, or UK, or Britain. Depends which how you say it, really. Obviously, they are well. UK and England are the same thing, but Britain is something slightly different. Let's go to texture paint and. <laughs> YouTube and driving, exactly, that's what I thought. But I imagine it's just listening uh, whilst um, whilst driving. Can't be watching whilst driving. Well, unless you're stuck in a traffic jam, I suppose. That could happen. Uh, what size is that colour texture? Ah, right, so the image is... What did I make my image? In fact, I can find that, can't I, by going to the image. It's a two. It's 2K. It's only an icon. It wouldn't make much difference, to be honest, but I'm just, just in case I need that extra detail. But um, this will look fine on a 512 by 512 texture. And really, 2K is way too big if you want to go low poly. I always uh, paint a bit higher than the final resolution, so usually it's 1024 by 1024 if I'm doing it for game. And then I will reduce the texture afterwards. Um, well, in fact, I often just send it as it is, and then the people reduce it. <laughs> Okay, so let's uh, let's get going. Uh, just uh, checking my sounds all right. So um, I'm assuming I haven't had no complaints yet. So I think we're all okay, aren't we? So just let me know if there are any issues. I'm painting these bits at the moment. And if I go to edit mode, you can see I've got those selected. So when I go back to texture paint mode, I can then press that button and I can only paint on that area there. I don't know why it's got this funny green texture to it now. And at the moment, I'm sort of painting in some shadows. So just putting a bit of shadow in. Obviously, the light's coming from the top, so that's going to be uh, a warmer look. That's a bit too dark there. I'm going to sample sample this color and then just darken it a bit. Maybe go a tiny bit towards... Maybe I should go towards the greens for a cooler color. Hmm. Just about there, perhaps. And just give it a bit of shadow underneath here. I've got uh, symmetry on, so it should be coming across the same on the other side and on this side as well. So symmetry, if you need to know, symmetry, X and Y. I've not mirrored the object, so it's uh, not mirrored, it's just symmetry. So you can see all my textures behind me, actually, it's behind me here. Actually, so you probably, could you just about see the 2048? I'm going to make this bigger, actually. And also, I haven't put my references up on screen. I usually do that. I probably don't need them for this, but it's always handy to have. So I'm going to be off screen for a second, putting some references on. Um, in fact, I suppose I'll show you this. Oh, easy. Why is it doing that? That's trying to update Pure Ref. Um, okay, so this is Pure Ref, and I've got um, lots of references for my Atlas Empires just here. Oh, hmm, load back up. Let's try loading the back up. Hopefully, yes, there we go. This is the one I'm really looking at for inspiration. But I've got lots of bows here. Here's the icon they want updating. So I think they'll probably want a red and green background again like this. But they might end up using their own and just use my model in front of their own. <laughs> uh, what low poly resolution should we use? Um, your end textures should be around 512 in my opinion. Um, but it does depend on where your game's going to be going. Um, assuming that it's for a game. If it's not for a game, you don't have to worry. Um, the only reason you worry is um, because of rendering times um, at, in terms of in-game frame rates and stuff. So I was talking to someone the other day, I'm sure they, I can't remember who it was, but they were talking about um, how they used uh, 2K PBR textures. So that's every texture like the albedo or diffuse, whatever you might want to call it, um, roughness, normal maps, they were all 2K and they had lots of these models around the place and their frame rate in the game was really low. So that's what you have to worry about. Uh, uh, good stuff. I hope, hope this is all helpful to you all. <laughs> Just have a look at my messages uh, whilst we're here. Okay, so here's all my references. And that's really, the, I mean, there's, I've used more than that. I've had to sort of take some away. But if you look in, there's, there's millions like the skull icon and the sword icon. And now I'm on the bows. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's, that's a good sort of reference uh, tool. Is, this is pure ref. So I can sort of zoom in and out. I can make sure this stays on top if I want it to. And yeah, it's just very useful. So pure ref, uh, if you need to know that. I suppose I ought to put these sort of links in the description. I have got a few affiliated links in the description. I always ought to say that. So there's a CG Boost course um, that is an affiliated link. So you'll be supporting me if you click on that. Um, just so you're aware that I'm not trying to con you or anything like that. Well, I suppose if you buy from there, I would be getting um, a small amount of income from it. 
so yeah, and oh, and there's um, Amazon links to things like my equipment and stuff like that as well, which are affiliated links. But let's carry on now, shall we? Let's carry on. Sometimes I use the multiply brush because that's a brush for darkening textures, and you can see it there. It's quite strong though. I usually bring the strength down of that a fair bit um, to about yeah, about two. Some yeah, there's one point point two I should say, not two. Um, so you get a bit of shadow on there and separate these two objects on the outside as well. And maybe just down the bottom here, just a touch, just lightly. But remember, the more you paint with the multiply brush, the further it's going to go towards black. Um, actually, I'll undo, whoop, I'll undo that a bit more. I suppose I ought to put my shortcut keys up as well. Thanks to JNM for these shortcut keys. Good job. Uh, he's a great uh, YouTuber. If you haven't already, then subscribe to his channel. Uh, loads and loads of great tips. The only thing I don't like about the multiply brush is you can see it keeps adding here. And uh, it's better if you can find your color, uh, sample it. So I've sampled that color, and then I just sort of mix it in easier, and it will blend in a bit more. Does that make sense? So I'm, um, I can't go. F I can't keep going towards black. Is what I'm trying to say here with this one. Uh, it will only go to this colour here. Just making sure it's all alright. Uh, no problems with the stream. Oh, we got quite a few on. That's I'm surprised actually. It was a really short notice and I thought, right, no, I really want to do a stream. I love doing this. Um, I love chatting to people, seeing what the questions are, which I've forgotten to look at. <laughs> As I started painting away. Uh, going larger to smaller is easiest. Yes, indeed. Um, so, uh, just like they said in voodoo head shrinking class. <laughs> 35 edu there uh, yes yeah, so start off uh, with a big texture in fact I'll get rid of this um, and then you can always shrink it down just like those voodoo heads <laughs> um, oh the green one yeah the um, the original one uh, oh, reference images we're talking about yeah. uh, just having a look uh, combi chan bit late to the conversation but ever find that texturing slash AO baking in 2K is way faster than 1K or 512. I don't know, I've not tried it. So baking for 2K is faster. Very, very interesting. Um, yeah, if you're baking, you might as well bake out again a resolution that's high and then reduce it. Um, for things like samples and stuff, it will just poss possibly do better. I think um, that's, uh, that's debatable actually. Uh, I'm not going to animate this logo, but that would be really cool, wouldn't it? I would like that. I might do it anyway. Actually, no, it's Atlas Empire's property, so I can't do that. <laughs> uh, Dada No, I, I wasn't sure whether I was going to do a stream today or not, and I didn't really advertise it much, hence why there's well, there's 110 uh, viewers, so that's a fair bit, isn't it? We sometimes get up to about 400, actually, which is quite amazing, really. Um, so uh, that's probably why I'm addicted to this, isn't it? It's just sort of it's an ego boost type thing, isn't it? Right, let's uh, go to the screen and uh, uh, let's sample this top color here. So it's quite a sort of goldy color. Uh, now metal, it does keep its color. Um, so you shouldn't go all the way to white, supposedly. I mean, you might have a really sharp highlight somewhere, but generally speaking, it keeps its color. Uh, whereas plastic, you do get white highlights in. Um, so, oh, that's a mirror image. So I have to have the highlight right at the very top. I can't have it on one side. You generally speaking, you'd have it on one side, really. But because I'm mirroring and I can't be bothered to, um, I say I can't be bothered, but for time's sake, I'm just gonna lighten that up. So you can see it's just lightening up there, and it's go. The more I brush, the more this will go towards white because I'm using the screen brush. But if I go back to mix and then sample this, uh, then it will only go to this brightness. Hopefully that makes sense. What I was trying to talk about earlier, anyway. Yes, stream more, please. Um, I'm never sure, really, because I think people prefer the tutorial videos, um, but I'm sort of trying things out a little bit and uh, seeing how we go. Um, but uh, I, I quite like, it uh, looks like uh, you're polishing gold. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I like the whole streaming thing. I must admit, I really find it fun. Uh, and uh, I, think, I think people can get uh, a lot out of it as well in terms of, can you see I'm going across the blue here and that's to uh, cool shadows. Oh, that's a bit of a glitch. Oh, that's not too bad though. It's out of the way. I can, you can always smudge these a little bit anyway. Oh, it lags though when I smudge a bit. That's the higher the texture, the more it's gonna lag, especially on the smudge tool. Maybe I ought to 
call that in as a glitch, what do you call it, bug report at some point maybe. So using the um, the blue as a shadow uh, because uh, it's a cool color and you get cool shadows and it does, it works quite well. But I've got to be careful not to go too far, um, which I did last time. Uh, are you, yes, that's a good question, M1SMR. <laughs> I use the middle mouse button uh, and I use that to rotate around my screen. So I'm holding the middle mouse button down. And someone contacted me the other day saying, oh, I can't get used to it. I, I couldn't get used to it at first, but get used to holding a pen and having that middle mouse button there. Uh, and it doesn't take long at all. It only actually took a few hours uh, to, for me to just, not even that, I don't think. I can't really remember how long it took, but um, I'm so glad I did because it just makes everything so much easier. I like watching streams, but I hate doing them. It reminds me of giving a report in front of the class, yes. Um, I suppose because I'm a teacher, I'm always standing up in front of classes anyway. So uh, I, I suppose that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to uh, work to my strengths. So I know there's probably a few YouTubers out there who don't want to do live streams. So I, I can sort of carve a niche out for myself. Uh, not that I'm, I'm trying to outdo anybody, but I, um, it, it's nice to have a place for yourself, isn't it? Rather than being the same as everybody else. So something that's... Uh, people come to me for, uh, and I, then you feel more wanted, don't you? I'm going to go to the screen brush again, and I'm just going to put some highlights around the edges. Just around here. Oh, I'm way into the white there. I might go a bit warmer. Just, and you have to be careful. I mean, I could go to, oh, look, see, there we go. I've got that completely wrong. I'm going to have to go to, so I'll do that. Uh, so so I can't see the edges at the moment. If I click on this one, you can, uh, so I've got sh uh, control shift, click on that, and you get a viewer node. Can you all see that? Yes, you can. Uh, and that will um, allow me to see it as it will en end up being. But this will see it with some shading, so I can then come in here. But I can't actually see exactly what it's going to look like. So this is probably going to turn out a bit brighter than I think. Does that make sense? Perhaps it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. So, Corey S, I'm... Do I'm Disappointed in you, 16 minutes late, that is disgraceful. <laughs> now, like I said, I, um, I didn't really advertise this at all, so I'm surprised there's this many people, 120 people actually, uh, without any sort of um, advert or anything. That's good going. It means um, you're very committed, committed people to the blend, committed to the blender. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to this now. Uh, so can you see how that's changed? I got the shadow there so I could see what I was doing and then I go back to the viewer node which takes out the shadow and remember I'm drawing in the shadow and the highlights. I can actually make this highlight quite big but I was just sort of roughly getting the direction of it so I didn't mess it up um, and get all squiggles everywhere so I should be able to look at this from most angles and it should be okay. Um, in fact I'm just going to go back to the shaded so I can just see this line, got that arrow head in the way there, but that should be fine. Just a bit of a highlight going around. Doing the Bob Ross now. A little bit of uh, quieter talking. I don't know why, uh, I must have watched too much Bob, Bob Ross and then I start doing it myself. As, um, or maybe it's just a comfortable, comfortable thing to do, to sort of talk quieter when you're doing, or concentrating, perhaps that's what it is. All right, and then back to um, the viewer node there. And we're there. <laughs> I just have a look at the, the chat. There's a moderator shootout at the moment. <laughs> it's quite a raises wrench. It's nice of you both, uh, both to always be here as well. That's quite that's good moderating, that is. Good moderating. Well done to the moderators. Um, big clap for the moderators, everybody. <laughs> but uh, you, you were slow to get rid of the bot, the last bot that arrived. So they were there for a little while. <laughs> Grand Abbott's dad is Bob Ross. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, right. Uh, it's not looking much like gold, but um, I'm being a bit quicker this time, and it's not necessarily uh, what they're after. They're not looking for really super realistic, but it probably needs to go a little bit further. I'm, I'm nervous of going too far now because I did last time. It went too far, over the top, and got telling off. <laughs> of course, they didn't tell me off. They were just sort of, um, oh, I don't suppose you could. Uh, 
He's a lovely guy. Um, well, um, it's just Chris at the moment who's telling me what to do, but uh, there are others there as well that um, talk to me and stuff. <laughs> There's uh, Sammy as well, who's a lot like the CEO, and he was on the live stream once. It was uh, it was quite funny, you know, having your your boss, as it were, come on the live screen uh, live stream like that. Just making it a bit darker around the base there. I do have to remember, it's probably going to be at a slight angle, but it's still got to be mirrored, really. Um, but maybe one side will be dark and the other. Oh, that means I need to turn the mirror off. I'll just do it lightly for the moment, and then when I turn it to one side, then I'll probably <laughs> I'll probably um, sort it out a bit more from there. Uh, so at the moment, it looks fairly goldish, doesn't it? Not too bad. Probably a little bit too highlight at the top there. But I can uh, do a few sort of... Now, this is where I need to turn um, symmetry off. Okay, and what I'm going to do is uh, a few highlights, not highlights, what are they called, um, uh, details. So there's going to be a dent here, for example. So I just, uh, the way I do a dent, think about where the light's coming from. So it's coming from the top here. So there's the shadow. So you've got to think this area here is going to be highlighted, and then there's a shadow underneath it. And then uh, we'll go to screen brush. That was multiply at the moment. So let's go to screen. I'll sample this and then uh, make my brush much smaller for the screen and just make a sort of highlight there, but a stronger highlight at the bottom here because the light's coming from the top, remember? And it's hitting that bottom area. So we've got a sort of dent, although um, it's a bit small. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, you can have small dents and big dents, so maybe we'll have a bigger dent down here. So this time I'll do a proper dent. Uh, so somewhere around here, nice big brush this time. Oh, I haven't got it very dark there. Let's sample this color down here. Uh, do I find the denoising node is too strong? Uh, it can be. You probably need to turn up the samples a bit then. Uh, it's it's not like a magic wand as such. You do have to be a bit careful with it. Um, I know what you're saying because sometimes it just get, you feel like it just goes a bit too far. Try not to make these dents too circular as well. Uh, that can just be crazy. Let's come under here, sample this color, and then we've got a little highlight on the top there, so it's just catching the light a bit, but more of a highlight at the bottom here. And you can sort of see that coming out as a bit of a dent. Yay! Dents. <laughs> Dents, everybody. And then maybe we'll have a sort of dink. <laughs> Dents and dinks. Uh, so we'll have the multiply brush, probably need to go a bit darker. Sample that one bit thicker something like this and the shadow is the mainly at the top there isn't it because uh, that's where the lights not reaching and then oh it's a little bit wobbly that isn't it a little bit wibbly wobbly I say that more and more because it's kind of becoming my catchphrase sometimes I just can't think of the right words so wibbly wobbly just ends up coming out and alt uh, middle click that's a useful command uh, it will uh, center around the area so you can start rotating around. And now I can, I thought I'd gone screen, then I have, but I haven't sampled the color. There we go. And we can just make this, that was awful actually, that was sloppy brush strokes there. And then just a touch of a highlight at the top there. And there's a dent. But it looks a tiny bit weird. I might have to sample this area next to it, to go to mix. This is how you rub out. You sample the area next to the bit you want to rub out, and look, it looks like it's rubbing out there. It's quite cool, that. It's sort of like a Photoshop trick, that, but it's just a digital painting trick, actually. I learned that from Control Paint, actually. That's uh, quite a useful site. A long, long time ago. I'm assuming it's still going and stuff. Okay, so uh, we've got a dent, a dink, and another bigger thing there, whatever that is. You, I probably need to go a touch darker just on the very edges here. So let's get the multiply brush, come in. Now this is where I start going too far because you sort of look and want to get real high detail in areas and stuff. But, uh, but it's good to sort of outline your shapes a bit. You can sort of overdo that a bit uh, with low poly work and it, it seems to help it somehow. I'm not sure really why, but it does. It works. Um, so uh, let's back to... Um, I went to edit mode there by accident. Uh, back to... There we go. Non-isolation um, mode. Anyway, um, if you can make a sign on the wood, why would we want to sign on the wood? 
<laughs> oh, do you mean a sort of uh, as if it's been carved in? That would be quite cool, but it's too detailed. I think um, I would like to do that. And it's actually a very good idea, but I think it will be too detailed because remember, it's only an icon. But I like where you're going with that. I feel like the strap here, this sort of leather bit, um, or whatever, the cloth that's surrounding it, um, is um, a little bit to uh, what's the word I don't know what the word is I'm looking for but I'm on multiply anyway and let's just uh, it's not popping enough if you know what I mean so uh, when I mean popping as in it doesn't sort of jump out at you and therefore what it needs usually is uh, a bit more contrast and that usually means a bit more highlights and a bit more um, uh, crevices then shadows, uh, flat exactly. It's not. Uh, it's it's not flat. That's the word. Uh, is it going to be an icon? Yes, you're a yeah. Yes, it is going to be an icon for Atlas Empires. I can't remember which icon this is. is it true icons or something? Um, I did get told, but I'm dreadful like that. Um, I'm just sort of thinking about the art really, uh, rather than what it, ooh, what it's used for. That wasn't very good, was it? Just to have a bit more shadow coming along here. It's, it's a bit weird there. Do you, can you see that? It sort of needs a bit of smudging out there. A bit of a glitch. I'm getting a tiny bit of glare from my backlight here, um, which isn't helpful. So I'm going to move my tablet. Not too much. Easy. Um, I wonder if 3D editors will become convenient tools for 2D output. Um, I've been thinking about it lately. So, I mean, we've got things like grease pencil, and I imagine that sort of... Um, merging together of two um, outputs, 3D and 2D platform, they're not platforms are they, you know what I mean, um, will um, end up being, um, yeah, combined. I think you're right. Uh, because that's what you, you, you sort of have to think about new styles and stuff, don't you, and uh, what's around the corner and always be thinking about those sort of things. Just looking at this highlight here, sample that color again, get a little bit brighter. A little bit towards the yellow, so it's a bit warmer. Just there. Did I turn? I did turn symmetry off, didn't I? That's why I'm not getting any symmetry. So I've just done those. Oh, that is annoying when you do that, isn't it? But to be fair, I shouldn't do this with symmetry anyway because I need a sort of highlight here, don't I? Let's just have a look at that. That's looking all right. I thought for a moment I'd gone a bit over the top with it, but I think it's okay. That's cool, isn't it? So it's looking pretty good. Um, the strap, the arrowhead, and the, the shaft of the arrow. Oh, wow, thanks very much. Uh, that's really kind of you, Max. Uh, I really appreciate it. <laughs> You're amazing. I love that. Love the little animation. That's really cool. Uh, thank you ever so much. Uh, that's really, really kind. <laughs> that's wonderful, isn't it? I, I, it, it every time... Uh, someone donates it blows me away it's just brilliant uh, and it really does it supports the channel fantastically and like i was saying the new camera not that you want to see my face that much <laughs> to be honest I need a I need a worse camera so it goes more blurry uh, but the microphone certainly people like my voice uh, it's, i think it's just because i've got a british british accent um, but it does help uh, good quality audio doesn't it uh, makes a massive difference so i've got this nice new microphone because of people donating people like max today's episode is sponsored by max and it's beautiful little animated emoji gif there. <laughs> Thanks ever so much. Um, uh, sorry, Jay Yasmin. Uh, sorry, um, but Bluetooth first. Uh, do you use PBRs in low poly models? You can do, and it's a, it's the sort of um, uh, what's the? Uh, oh, I'm th I'm not thinking World. Of, yes, I am thinking World of Warcraft. Yes, I was thinking World of Warcraft. Never mind. But anyway, uh, that's that sort of style where they're using a bit of PBR now, aren't they? Um, but it's still very stylized, and so it's still low poly. Uh, they, I mean, low poly is a very um, loose term, to be honest. Um, traditional low poly for, let's say, mobile games, uh, you wouldn't use PBR, and it's all hand painted. But then there's low poly that uses PBR, and they use normal maps a lot. Um, so most games w could be classed as low poly, really. So um, hopefully that's sort of making sense. It's a, it's a very confusing term, low poly, because it's also a style as well, as well as a, a sort of practical term. Uh, what else have we got? Um, 
uh, or just an icon, a stopped icon. Uh, so it's, it, uh, I know this, uh, I'm sort of cheating in a way because I'm calling this a low poly piece of work, but actually it's just for an icon, but they want the low poly style that I've been using all along. Hence why I'm saying this is what you do if you're painting for low poly. So I'm keeping roughly the same rules as I would um, when I'm doing normal low poly, although my textures are much higher and my, my model is probably a bit higher than it would be as well. <laughs> Thanks, uh, that account, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you, you hot, don't say that. <laughs> um, it's, again, I think that's my Britishness coming out there where we sort of, a self-deprecating thing that we do, uh, and most of us anyway, I'd say, uh, some of us, most of us, uh, we sort of take the mick out of ourselves before someone else does. I think that's the idea. Uh, uh, the bow looks like a model for a rare bow from World of Warcraft's early expansions. Do you know, I've never played World of Warcraft. I've just looked at the artwork. It's really cool, uh, but never paid it, um, played it myself. Have I thought about making a paid-for course? Um, I've thought about it. I have thought about it, but um, I'm quite happy the way things are going. But maybe I ought to go down that route because then maybe I could put more effort into it and not be thinking about the YouTube algorithms all the time and stuff like that. But um, I'm thinking about them less and less because more people are subscribing to my channel and I can be less sort of um, worried about its growth and more about um, getting good content out there, good consistent courses almost for people who are beginning or intermediates. I need to get more intermediate sections and advanced sections, I think, would be good. Um, so I'm trying to keep it all free because of support like, like people like Max, uh, people like Max, sorry, and um, others that have supported me. Uh, and uh, the fact that I can just about get by with the advertising revenue and I'm doing things like this uh, you know uh, this is freelance work so um, it's all adding to, adding up and I'm able to uh, get by hopefully that makes sense <laughs> just having a look uh, someone called Bob Ross on here which is very interesting <laughs> uh, hello Gingy is it Gingy or uh, Gingy because we'd sort of say Gingy sometimes but uh, uh, Gingy <laughs> Uh, don't know what's happening here on I'm on mobile, but since it's at Grant Livestream, it's probably awesome. Looking forward to watching it later. Ah, oh, so it's a shame. So it's not going through on your mobile. Um, yes. Uh, well, thank you very much for the donation. Um, oh, so actually, that's a different Max, isn't it? So <laughs> it's two Maxes. Uh, I'm not sure. I, th I think that's a different Max. But you, you re in fact, I think you donated last time even, didn't you? Anyway, uh, enough of that. Uh, have you ever thought of working in studios like Blizzard? His style is very similar to games. Like, well, yeah. Um, I. I don't think they'd have me. I don't think I'm good enough, to be honest. Uh, I'm getting there, uh, and some of it's half decent, uh, but they, they, they've they got their pick of artists there, and they are just absolutely brilliant. Uh, so, uh, yeah, maybe I am. <laughs> maybe I... You don't know till you try, uh, but I haven't tried because I'm getting enough sort of freelance work, and I, I imagine as well, I'd, I, if, it, if I did manage to get a job somewhere like that, I'd have to start off right at the bottom rung, and be doing things like, I don't know, um, there might be loads of feathers on a character and you're just constantly painting feathers for two weeks or something. It's because you're at the lowest end sort of thing. So um, I imagine you'd end up being like that. <laughs> In about 30 years, a cult following will uh, celebrate these as Bob Ross reincarnate. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Uh, it's always good to know a bit of programming, even if you're not a full programmer. Uh, yeah, I, I ought to learn a bit more programming. I don't seem to get the time. I, I suppose I'm lucky enough that I can specialize at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think you were probably advising someone else there. But yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, that account, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Grant the Feather Boy. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, uh, now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on the stringy bit. Or this not, It's going to be sort of like a bit ropey. <laughs> but stringy. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's uh, go across to MA. I? I feel like I'm in isolation mode. What? Uh, what's going on? I'm on texture paint and I'm on mix. Okay, so I have only got the bow selected. Oh, so that must be a separate object. So I couldn't remember how I built this now. Okay, so let's go across to this bow section here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so let's go to texture paint mode and come in and uh, make my brush a bit less silly. I'll just sample this color and then I can lightly put some shading around here. And once you find your color, then I can sample it again 
and then I can sort of not go beyond that point. Did I turn mirror off? I did, didn't I? So I'm going to undo that. Da, 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 da. Doesn't matter too much if it goes all the way and turn mirror back on because there's no point in painting loads and loads. I'm just going to get rid of all these things as well. Goodness me. Stabilize stroke, stroke. Uh, right, uh, where are we? Symmetry. Just check that's coming across the other side. Actually, I think they were mirrored anyway and they were on top of each other. They might as well be. And I think I did that on purpose. Oh, that's a bit blocky there. Went a bit glitchy, didn't it? In that area. Because the, this end, uh, right, alt, middle click, and I can zoom in on that area. There we go, that's a bit better. Right, so just shading it first before adding any detail. I notice I'm not adding any detail. There will be a bit of shading coming down here. So I'll just do that sort of main, um, as if it sort of wraps around itself. So it looks a little bit like, you sort of see the, the makeup of it at the moment, can't you? Hopefully, hopefully that's making sense. Sort of going into itself there slightly. And then just giving that bit a bit more shading there. Why are you so beautiful? Thank you, Jonathan Gonzalez. That's very kind of you to say. <laughs> it's the lighting. It's not me. <laughs> Funny stuff. Why are you so beautiful? Um, I will be playing VR now. Hope the moderators do a good job. Uh, there, there's uh, there's only one left now. Uh, Shazay Khan, uh, you're, you're on. <laughs> I took your advice and signed up with CG Boost. Uh, you're not only talented artist teacher yourself, uh, you set a good example for promoting other talented artists and teachers. He's good, isn't he? It's a good course, that. Uh, I, I was actually honestly slightly jealous when I looked at it. I thought, oh, this is really detailed. It's better than my stuff. Uh, he does well, Zacharias Reinhardt. Uh, he's, he's good. <laughs> Uh, John, uh, Jonathan and his voice. Oh, uh, his voice is uh, kind of hypnotic. Is my voice? Is that my voice that's hypnotic? I'm assuming it must be. So you probably can't hear Jonathan it's because he's just typing. <laughs> ah, Andrew Maxim, well done. I didn't see you here. Ah, I'd forgotten I'd made three uh, moderators. You're all here as well. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever write a book, I want you to read the audiobook. Uh, I, I'm always surprised that people like my voice so much. It's nice. It, it feels good. But I'm just surprised. Yeah, I think it's just the British accent, isn't it, that people like. So I've sampled this colour down here, and I'm trying to paint it in up here. Why is that not coming out? This doesn't seem to be very dark, does it? Let's go a little bit darker then. Maybe I didn't quite catch the colour sample. Yeah, why are you not sampling suddenly? Oh, that's a glitch, isn't it? Oh, there we go. And it did it that time. Funny little glitches. So just getting it a bit darker around here. I'm using the wood, which seems a bit weird, but it's very close, in a sense, to uh, rope colour, isn't it? Or you can sort of see through my model a little bit there. <laughs> Bad modelling, that is. Um, but um, they will sort of impact each other because, what is that called? Um, radiant light or something? Yes. Oh, it called where uh, light hits an object and reflects the light away from it uh, irradiance is it irradiance something yeah I can't remember the term now I should know this stuff honestly I'm a great artist I know my stuff <laughs> right I feel like this is going all over the place I'm going to sample that color and sort of blur it out can you see by sampling that one color I was able to sort of change and smooth it all into each other and I'm just going to go a touch darker and just make the base a little bit darker. There we go. Okay, so we've got what looks to be the right shape. Now we need to do those sort of angular bits. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm making sense, but it will make sense in a second. Angular bits doesn't make any sense at all, does it? I think it's just quiet and not polluted with unnecessary words and sounds, plus uh, popular male timber. Oh, sorry, my voice. This is... <laughs> Popular male timber. Oh, I like that. Oh, thank you very much. Ah, uh, political puppet theatre. Thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate that. Uh, thank you for all your content. Uh, you make an intimidating program approachable. Uh, we'll donate again thank later. Thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, it was really, uh, really fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, yep, uh, I'm, I'm glad people say that. Um, it, I've been a teacher for quite a long time, so... Um, I feel like, um, and also I've got um, students who are new to it, so I see the mistakes all the time, so I know 
what it's like. And it's a very intimidating program. It's become less intimidating, actually, than it used to be. Can you imagine what it was like previously? Oh, dear. And it's it's definitely getting better. But, it, yeah, it's still got a way to go, Blender, isn't it? Uh, anyway, uh, no, don't mean to be rude about Blender, of course, but um, to become more approachable, I think. Uh, but they've really done well with it, I think. Um, just having a look at what people are saying. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> Not sure. Why is the FBI keep? What's going on? Uh, I think people are commenting on other people, so I'm confused about the the chat at the moment. Do you always use reference images? Almost always. Occasionally, I'm I'm really rushing something. I just uh, and slap it out, sort of thing. But I think that's why someone from Blizzard is a better artist than me. I might come up with similar results in the end, but they'll get there a lot quicker and they may not need as many reference images or they may be able to come up with something a bit more individual than me because they've got a better bank of images in their mind if that makes sense uh, so uh, that's why it's good to practice things you're not good at as an artist and then you can build up those images uh, practice sort of in your head if that makes sense an image bank i think they call it that you can draw upon okay so now what i'm doing i'm gonna do this sort of uh, rope type scenario here I've still got them. I know I've, I've, it's the mix brush. That's all right. It always goes a bit wobbly when you get to the bottom and round the corners and stuff. And it's got a mirror on, so it is going to look a touch strange in places. But that's okay. Some can be thicker than others. That's all right as well. And some can be really weird angles like that one. But generally, I think uh, we should be right. Let's go back, and you can see that looks okay, doesn't it? Sort of. <laughs> oh, let's do that one again. And here, just um, generally, it's a good idea to sort of go the opposite way with the next bit of uh, string. Hopefully that makes sense. And it looks like it's sort of intertwined then, doesn't it? And I'll just go a bit dark with some of these. I might just go a bit fuller as well, but brushing a bit lighter. Um, so you can see I'm sort of doing a bit of shading now with each piece of... Uh, what is... What are um, intertwined bits of rope? So just lightly, trying to be light anyway, is my pressure sensitivity seem to turn off then? Maybe, I'm not sure, I, I had to do something with my drivers today, I was trying to test out a tablet but I could not get it to work. Uh, so um, I feel bad, but they sent me a tablet, Artisol, couldn't get it to work, it was very frustrating. Uh, I think it was interrupt. It was um, not working with the, my tablet drivers from uh, my Wacom, I think was the main issue. Um, I'm going a bit wobbly with this line to sort of feel like it's sort of rubbing against each other and intertwining there. And we need to go a bit darker around here, I think. Hopefully that's making sense. It could be more a curve. How many pixels in this texture? 2048 by 2048, but don't uh, use that high for games. Uh, I would reduce it. Uh, I'm just going to bring up that darkness and it's going to be lighter on top so we can get the screen brush on top and just go over the top like this a little bit. Just a touch. It's quite dark at the moment so that was hardly having any effect but if I do it now, it does. your brush will have an effect how um, hard your brush is. Uh, so I've got a bit of lightness there but now um, just where the light's going to hit these edges. There we go. And we've got a bit of rope. Beautifully done. <laughs> sort of, anyway. Um, just having a look. Uh, yeah, 2K texture uh, is what I'm using. Um, uh, and as Corey S says, double size of the final um, uh, final texture. And you, you could probably reduce this to 512 and it would still look and keep it sort of fidelity as it were. We might lose a tiny bit of details in here, but probably not, um, because I'm not really using it to its max strength. So does that rope look all right, do we think? I think it's looking all right. It's not close in, it looks like a pig's ear, but um, is, that, is that just a British term? Looks like a pig's ear? Uh, but, uh, generally speaking, from a bit of a distance, we're absolutely fine. I'm just going to Darken these sections up a little bit more. I think it needs a bit more shadow. Don't go too far, Grant, because you lose the cartoony look. And I'll get told off again. <laughs> Obviously, they didn't tell me off. I'm joking about the telling off. Uh, but they did want it more. 
it's sort of um, it's more stylized and cartoony, less serious. I think was the sort of um, what I was getting from them anyway. Okay, we're getting there. I've got to do a bit more when we rotate it. So thinking about where the light's going to go, and it's going to ro rotate uh, that way slightly. No, that looks wrong on camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mirror image. I don't know what's going on there, but it's going to go that way round. Uh, I could do that with grease pencil or something, can I? But I never use it, so I always remember, never remember how to rub it out and stuff. Uh, interesting. Okay, so uh, now different. I'm going to do a different technique for this bit, and the technique will be to use this here. Um, I know my head's in the way, so I'm just going to move my head out of the way. You can go up there, can't you? Hello, everybody. I'll go over here. Where am I going to go? Where am I going? Oh, where am I going? No. Why am I stupid? Why am I always a bit stupid with these things? There. I'll put me over there. So I'm in the outliner at the moment. How's that? <laughs> in both teaching and modeling. Well, I'm, it's about practice. Sorry, I'm, I'm reading and then answering a question. I haven't told everybody what the question is. Uh, that account, blah, blah, blah talking about uh, teaching and modeling uh, and just sort of getting better uh, and hopefully he'll get to my level is what he was saying but I'm sure it, it doesn't take long I uh, although I've been doing it for ages um, it, I've been doing it on and off and not full time and I was a teacher for a long a lot of the time I was using blender uh, and uh, I couldn't really practice and things so uh, it doesn't take as long as the 20 years that I've been doing it for but I would say if I've been doing it solidly if I were just being a blender artist it'd be probably about three years if it was all solid and packed in together so that's not really that long when you in the grand scheme of things really is it okay so what was I going to do oh yes I was going to paint down here so I was going to show you this so uh, this is my uh, rope texture here so I should all going well should uh, let's just actually I'll, I'll talk you through this a little bit so let's go to the UV editing layout and out of edit mode and choose that piece of rope uh, back to edit mode and yes it's nice and straight so we should have no problems if I draw some lines across this it should be okay uh, I say that but <laughs> you never know um, now the shading I probably do want the underside to be a bit darker and I'll just figure out where the underside is if that makes sense so I should be able to <coughs> excuse me come on to here paint and just see where these things are okay so I'm just getting an idea of where we are where we're at so I should be able to do a sort of underside down here down there how's that yes that is the underside so that's good it's very greeny isn't it when did I change it to green did I ever change that to green <laughs> I was thinking it's coming out really green why is that I now know it's green that's why it came out green tricky stuff blender sometimes isn't it Make my brush a little bit bigger. So we've got a bit of shadow coming onto the underside and top. There we go. Nice and easy. Cool. Um, <laughs> winter stuff away with my new vacuum bags. <laughs> Interesting discussions here. <laughs> uh, on top of the bow, where wouldn't you lose some details if you reduce it by half? Not really. Um, it's just much easier to paint uh, when you've got more detail to play with. And then when you reduce it, it just really blurs slightly. You'd be surprised how much you could. You could probably almost go down to two, five, six with this, and you wouldn't. And you'd probably get about uh, this. Wouldn't change much from here. Probably. <laughs> I reckon. I reckon it'd be an interesting experiment, but I haven't got enough time at the moment. <laughs> Do it another time. Okay, so what am I doing here? We are coming across here with the multiply brush. I'll put the strength up a little bit more and just do this. And I'll do a few and see what it's looking like. Now that's way too wide. Was that way too wide? I think it was because they've got to be compar comparable to that, haven't they? So a bit smaller. That's better, but still not great. Cool. That I made those really tight, didn't I? That was a bit stupid of me. So what I'll do do them like this to start off with that's looking okay isn't it I'm being quite rough it doesn't I don't think it matters too much if I'm rough uh, because and obviously this won't work on the other side yeah so there's gonna be a seam here that's the problem when you paint on this area you will get a visible seam but that's on the other side we'll probably get away with that and it's not even that bad actually you can 
if you get it close enough, you can sort of tidy these up a little bit if you really want to do, but we're, it's not going to be seen. Oh, we're not doing that. Oh, I've had my mirror on, didn't it? Oh, control Z, please. Um, you have to do that without mirror on, obviously. And I'm going to take the mirror off fully because, um, because it's on here. So if that makes sense you don't mirror won't work on here it'll only work in here um, enjoying uh, watching my head bob every time I brush my strokes <laughs> uh, the mad titan thanks for all your help with the tutorials uh, and your recommendation of Vic A50 I got one and it works pretty well good only pretty well I would have thought that would work amazingly well I'm disappointed that it's only pretty well <laughs> They're good things though, aren't they? I uh, do take a bit of get, getting used to, so don't. Um, uh, it doesn't come all at once, I'm afraid. Uh, with this, the skill level, if that makes sense. Uh, so don't get despondent with it. Um, keep practicing. I suppose I do this, don't I? Uh, as I'm leaning round, leaning round. Very exciting. So, oh, that was a wibbly wobbly line, wasn't it? I mean, you can have some wibbly wobbly lines. Wibbly wobbly. Um, Strokes are easier to keep um, in a straight-ish line if you um, draw it a little bit quicker. Um, so if you try and do it slowly, that nah, wasn't too bad. But look how wo wibbly wobbly compared to that one. Never do it quickly. No problems. It's like that's gliding across the surface. There, you immense skill you have, Grant. Well done. Oh, Charles McDonald, hello to you too. <laughs> you really don't have to, you know, because you have given me so much already. Um, it's uh, <laughs> it's just it's amazing. Uh, so it's, uh, if you don't know and you're not aware, but Chance McDonald um, <clears throat> uh, always comes on and always uh, donates uh, because I... <laughs> I don't wonder why myself, but he's absolutely fantastic, and he's been really supportive. <laughs> don't Corey S. That that's uh, no thank you. Uh, that's more than enough. <laughs> thank you ever so much. Uh, you're, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I probably need to put your name in the background of the videos, um, <laughs> so to give you some uh, kudos in some way. I'm just going across these, making sure my uh, strip of, um, you know, bow thing is looking cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, express my gratitude of your work. I appreciate that. <laughs> You'll need to model Ronald McDonald at this rate. <laughs> what is it you do a chance McDonald I'm interested because uh, oh <laughs> pulled that out by accident hey I can't get it can't get it back now there we go um, uh, because you're often on the stream so you're often about just wondered uh, if you I don't know do you work from home or something like that uh, tell us more I'm interested I'm 39 retired at 31 what <laughs> what that's pretty cool. So, uh, so you retired, and it's it just a hobby then, the Blender stuff, uh, or are you sort of hoping to do some more, like make a game or something cool? Tell me more. <laughs> he could have just had hired me. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> okay, so we've got our bow string there. It's not looking too bad. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Uh, people are um, one uh, sort of trying to figure out what it is that you've done to make yourself in the Bill Gates manager <laughs> to make yourself rich. I suppose we can call it. Can we call you rich? I think um, I don't really like using that term because it still has connotations, doesn't it? Um, just doing some highlights now down the end of these. Uh, more so on the top, really. Actually, to come to think of it, which is sort of should be around here, shouldn't it? Because it's not there, because that would be the seam, wouldn't it? The back end seam. Where are we? Oh, chance isn't uh, isn't answering anymore. <laughs> expired at thirty one. No, th retired at thirty one. Not expired. <laughs> I suppose some people might be um, <laughs> on their mobile phones. It, autocorrect does that sort of thing, doesn't it? It's, it can be a bit embarrassing. You see some funny funny memes about that sort of thing, don't you? That people getting it wrong. 
just going down the end here probably taking way too long on this because it doesn't really need to be this detailed but I like to be a bit of a perfectionist especially when I'm on live streaming um. <laughs> <laughs> looking at some of the chat okay so there's the rope that's looking okay in my humble opinion <laughs> just say, telling you it looks okay now I suppose that is an issue that it's so square look at how square it is and that's where you might need more resolution and that is an issue painting across here as well uh, it's kind of um, the um, problems you get with texture painting that's what I'm trying to say anyway <laughs> You're the best Blender trainer in YouTube. Thank you very much. Um, I do my best, definitely. Try hard. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's a different texture. So this is on a different... No, yeah, that's weird. I've got the arrowhead on one texture and this all on another. Let's have a look where that is. Arrow. There it is. Ah, here we go. I feel like this is too uh, dark. So I'm just going to go to edit mode. Oh, this is very detailed, isn't it? I didn't know my arrow was this detailed. That's naughty, really, isn't it? shouldn't be that detailed and that's all one object so I can select that all together that's good um, in fact I'm gonna go linked link select yeah uh, L by the way is link select that's really handy uh, you can select areas I'll do that in other places as well see so link select um, alt a and then L because that was all sort of one object by itself you can select by seam down here as well that's quite handy I feel like putting myself back now I don't like being in the top corner here I feel like here makes more sense because then it's a lot like there's a cutoff here because I've got no body now, if I go around like this. I prefer being down here. <laughs> uh, hello, Interpixel. Nice to see you on here. Uh, yes, the arrow was important. Oh, yeah. Corey S., you know what you're talking about. You've been watching all my streams, haven't you? <laughs> yes, indeed. It was imported in from um, a different project um, where I was, I was sculpting one of the characters. Um, so, yes. <laughs> Just look at what people are saying. Um, Right, so uh, where were we? Um, uh, text painting, text painting. Am I yeah, I'm text paint mode. Sometimes I forget that I'm in UV editing mode and start changing that all around. Uh, Wacom Intuos Three used for less than fifty dollars, and it works great. Yeah, I mean they still work really well, don't they? The Wacom brand is good like that. I don't know how long the other brands last for in that sense. The only thing is, um, in is it has it got the eight thousand levels of pressure sensitivity? Not that you really need that much, to be fair. Um, I've worked on 2,000 um, and I work now on 8,000 and I can't tell the difference between the two, to be honest. Maybe if I had them right next to each other, I'd be able to tell, but really, there's not much in it. Uh, let's brighten that up. A whoa, whoa. Oh, I forgot to press that masking button there. Oh, let's go to edit mode again. Link select. There's a bit of a bug. And if I go back to texture paint and use the mask. Yeah, that was work that time. So it's probably not a bug. It's probably just me. User error. That doesn't look the right brown, does it? Or maybe it does. What do we think? Is that right? Just a touch darker, I think. If I go back there. Yeah, I prefer that, I think. I feel like I want it somewhere in the middle now. I might have to give it some texture as well. I wasn't going to give it much texture, but I think I will. I'm just going to give it... Uh, we've got the screen on, so we'll give it a bit of screen in places. See, now, if this was a smaller texture like... 1024 by 1024 uh, I should just say 1k shouldn't I mean it takes ages to say it uh, then um, you probably wouldn't get that much detail but you can see from here you can hardly see that detail anyway so it's kind of pointless detail oops so I'm going to make it a bit thicker the harder I press the more thickness and I've got that pressure sensitivity there but I probably need to bring this down a little bit let's get a bit of ready colour in there as well and I should have put symmetry on really just been easier. Hmm, not quite there. Oh, what happened to my palette? I'm sure I had a bigger palette than this. Let's just vary these colours to give it a tiny bit of variation. And if it's as if it's catching the light somewhere along the line. I think that's alright. Probably a little bit darker up here, so I'll go for the multiply. Oh, I always had screen on, that was a bit idiotic of me, wasn't it? Put the multiply on up here and just Give it a bit of shading up the top here, just a touch, maybe 
bring it in a touch there we go okay that will do for the bow uh, but the, what's that called arrow stem <laughs> all right sorry um wasn't the arrow imported for yeah we said that one uh i just picked up oh, yep we've had that one as well <laughs> can you give me advice on how simple art style i uh give me advice on can you give me advice how simple art style i should pick <laughs> i'm making my game alone and would l would need to make a lot of models go a really sort of low poly blocky um maybe a bit like um uh, you know that sort of pixel art what's it called um where they're blocky like minecraft almost goes really low and just make it all about the sort of gameplay um but if you want to go a bit more than that then think low poly but just that bit more stylized a bit more structure to it because low poly can be like uh, a human that has a sort of a torso is just one square or the torso can be like three sort of circular squares circular squares you, you get those you know <laughs> i say squares i mean uh, rectangle no what do i mean cubes but you can sort of shape your cubes a bit more and they can become more like a human form so just um uh, slowly build up your detail level in low poly work and always think um uh, try uh, always start I was saying that in the last video, wasn't I? Hey, Naylan, nice to see you here. <laughs> uh, good to catch up the, the stream uh, this time around. Is your protagonist personality shining through? Uh, take some US dollars, you've earned it. Thank you very much, Naylan. We were to, um, I'll come back to that. Um, what was I saying? I'll come back to that in a second, Naylan. <laughs> uh, what was I saying about? I got completely distracted. Naylan chucked some money at me. <laughs> Naylan is an admin uh, for my Discord channel. And he does a great job. Uh, and we were chatting earlier. If you go onto the Discord, you'll see it. I think other people were doing it as well. It's a personality test. Uh, and I got protagonist as mine. And other people were doing it as well. It's quite fun to do. Uh, maybe Nalon, can you post the link in here? Uh, and then people can have a go and see what, and shout out which type they are. As it's quite a fun thing. I, it's, it's weirdly enjoyable. Finally, you do, it, I felt it was fairly um, accurate-ish. Uh, um, I've had I've had that type before come up in different tests, so it must be uh, fairly accurate in that sense because you never really know, do you? But the, do you know what I did straight away when I looked at my personality? I looked through and there was a strengths, weaknesses, and all this sort of stuff and description. I kind of ignored most of it and just went straight to the weaknesses because I feel like that's the most important thing for building on your character. It's work on your weaknesses. Uh, what weaknesses might my personality have that I need to be aware of? And they were things like being uh, <laughs> being too, uh, what's the word? Um, not altruistic, but uh, expectant of the world uh, because I'm a bit of a philosopher and I like to think the best in everybody and maybe that's just not realistic. But I don't know that's a weakness. I think it's a good thing and I don't want to get rid of that. I think it's good to think the best in people. Uh, you might be let down. I suppose that was the problem uh, that they were suggesting about that. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, sorry. I didn't really work very hard on my description. Uh, is, can anybody link to the Discord for me? That would be really helpful. Uh, anyway, um, hello, yes, sir. Nice to see you on here as well. <laughs> Bo is looking great. Thank you. Just need to do the arrowhead now. Almost there, aren't we? How long have I been streaming for, actually? Oh, an hour. So that's, I was thinking an hour and a half of this. I am playing football later, so I've got to uh, make sure I don't miss that. Oh, can't miss five-a-side football. Looking forward to that one. Uh, Chance McDonald. I took a personality test for work. If I was in a room with 10,000 people, uh, there would be only two that would be disagreeable, uh, as disagreeable as me. Whoa. <laughs> what did you get? <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting uh, yeah soccer not uh not american football but uh, we we call it football over here we we got there first on that name i say we the english and i don't really associate myself sometimes with english especially after brexit <laughs> but i am i can't help being uh british i suppose can i uh that's a very interesting one chance for donald you should try taking this personality test as well Naylon, are you still with us can you put it back up uh if you can find the link oh what was it called Oh, I'd have to go on the Discord and find it, and then I'll be distracted from what I'm doing. If anybody can find the Discord server and the personality test, have a look. Anybody from the Discord server here? They might not be. <laughs> let me tell. Uh, let me t let me tell. Uh, tell me if you are. <laughs> My brain's going. I must be getting tired. 
Uh, I played volleyball in middle school for fun. Yeah, I love, love a bit of volleyball. I can't do it so much now because I keep dislocating my arm, my shoulder. Uh, so I can't do that so much. But I, I love all sport, I really do. Only the USA calls it soccer. <laughs> the entire world calls it football indeed. But I, I mean, and it is difficult because they have American football, so which they call football, which I do understand. <laughs> Um, could you go over how you control the blender view and draw on the tablet at the same time? Yeah, I was talking about that earlier, actually. Uh, middle mouse button here. That's all it is. Uh, I, I suppose I'm, I've got my hand. In fact, I'll put, oh, I'll put this. It's, I've got this, oh, there it is, webcam. Uh, there we go. So I have my hand, uh, this other hand. So this is my left hand. Uh, and oh, it's in the way of the microphone, but I've got that over the control and shift keys and alt keys if I need them. And then um, I've got middle mouse button here. And so I set this button up as middle mouse button. Get used to that because you just move around, paint, move around the paint, and then in and out is control, middle mouse button, and strafe, shift, middle mouse button. So you can move around so quickly. Uh, so you must get your tablet. That's the main thing uh, a tablet must have is pressure sensitivity and also a programmable, programmable pen that you can change to the middle mouse button. Very important that. Uh, anyway, where are we? We're talking football. <laughs> I just found it in the Discord. Excellent. Can you post the link, Robert Russell, please? <laughs> 16 personalities. That's the one. Com uh, Combi Chan, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, have a go, everybody. Uh, but keep the stream live. Uh, don't, don't, don't shut down the stream. Otherwise, I'll lose loads of viewers. <laughs> uh, because I'm interested to see what other people, uh, who are there. Because as, as people are posting their personalities, suddenly you see them. Because all you see is an emoji, not emoji, what do you call them, avatar thing. And um, when they say what their personality is, suddenly you think, oh, so you're, you're like this. But when I'm looking at people in a room, you can almost by people's mannerisms, you can tell a bit about them. But you can't do that on the Internet. Maybe that's a good thing, obviously. But it's just nice to get to know people a bit more and find out what their personalities is and stuff like that. Uh, anyway. Uh, would you use that touch display for modeling in Maya, not sculpting? Uh, yes, yeah, I sometimes use this for modeling. Rarely, uh, I use it for retopo a lot. Um, so painting, uh, sculpting, and retopo are the main things I use it for. Okay, so let's go back to object mode, select my end arrow. Now this is gonna be a little bit tougher to draw, I think. Um, yeah, hopefully I've got enough polygons there. Yeah, let's see how we get on, I suppose. I can always change it if it's the worst comes to the worst. I'll change it. Let's just check the painting on there. We're not. Why am I not painting on there? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, what is going on? Object mode. Oh, I didn't choose it. That's why. Oh, strange. Texture paint. There we go. It's working. Right, now we can get symmetry going again. X and Y. Let's just check that's working. Because sometimes you've got uh, it rotated, so it might be thinking X is a different way. Because this is at a local X and Y axis, so um, I've reset the the rotation for all my objects, so that should work fine. And there we go. It's done. <laughs> hey. uh, what else have we got here? I'm, I'm getting into the chat now. I shouldn't. I should. These people are going to get fed up with me not doing anything. Uh, Left-handed users have it easier with pen displays. Is that right? Well, I find because the buttons are down the right-hand side, I mean, I could be using all the buttons here. I just prefer my keyboard for the other keys like F and sample, F for brush size, shift F and so forth. Um, but, but I could have programmed these keys, but I never bother. So I'm constantly reinstalling the drivers. Oh, look what I've done. I've put my tablet thing up. Uh, what, well, I don't even can't remember which button that is now. Uh, uh, thank you. My question was more about texture style. Maybe you have some creative idea to waste little time and make it look pretty. I see what you mean now. Sorry. Um, so texture style. Um, you can, uh, some people do some really nice sort of plasticine looking textures and then you can just sort of dump that texture on pretty much everything. Not plastic. It's not plasticine. That's a brand name. But um, is it plasticine? You know what I mean. Play-Doh is what um, other people call it, don't they? Play-Doh type. Uh, and that can look really nice. A uh, very rough material. Uh, rather than shiny, shininess uh, and specular. Bring those right, the roughness right up, specular right down. Uh, I think those are the nicest st style. They've, in fact, uh, whilst we're on the subject, let's bring this down here. So uh, weirdly, it was up on the screen. There's these sort of low poly worlds, and that's not particularly shiny. There's shiny elements in there, but generally it's a really sort of matte look, matte finish, and I think that gives it a nicer look. Those are my Atlas Empires references there. 
Let's get back to the the arrowheads. There we go. Play-Doh, you mean? Yes, modeling clay, modeling clay. Because I think either, all of them are sort of brand names, aren't they? Uh, uh, Polly Bloom, uh, have you sent me your portfolio stuff? I can't remember. I cannot remember. Do send it through though. Uh, so I don't mind taking the odd look at portfolios. I'm struggling a little bit for time at the moment, but then I'm doing live streams too often. <laughs> it must be. Okay, let's get this going because then I can. Um, you know what I mean by that when I say this going. That's my control shift, control shift, node wrangler installed, must be installed to get that viewer node. The viewer node is what it will look like eventually, but I can actually see the outline here. And what I want to do with this, the, um, so uh, take a look at our reference images again, shall we? Nope, let me bring it down here. So here's a good example. Uh, it's a bit over the top. This is what I uh, was using for my dagger, and it was, it was too over the top uh, because there was the original icon. So I'm going a bit more this sort of style, which is a bit more gamey. Uh, looking and stylized, but can you see how this edge is much lighter than the middle? So that's what I'm trying to do with um, this piece. I'm just going to find some other bits of reference images. That's probably the best one, I think, actually. Yeah, I'm going to leave that down there. <laughs> you can't see what I'm doing, so I don't know why I'm talking. Um, oh my God, my idol is live. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ronel. Is that how we? Ronel Torres. <laughs> Um, oh, thank you, um, Anton. Uh, I'm glad you enjoy my ideas. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, Dan, I'm not sure about their project release date because that should have been mid-February and that's, we, we've passed it, so uh, I'm not sure. So I'm reluctant to say when exactly it's going to be out. But uh, maybe they're just waiting for this icon and I'm holding up. <laughs> I hope that's not the case. So I'll do um, a quickly... Oh, that's gone. Why has it gone green again? Who's going green? What's going on? Uh, probably a bit bluey. Yeah, I think about there probably. And it's not particularly blue there. No, sort of great, but I'm on screen, so it's going to go nice and light. So couple there like that, and then I'm going to sample this and turn it to mix instead, and then I can just get that the same level all the way around. I want. To, I was thinking a sort of flint look, but I'm not completely positive. But that's what I'm thinking. So it can be sort of um, cut off here as well. That'll look kind of interesting. Right, so we've got that. So now we'll go a bit sort of uh, darker blue for the middle. There we go. Ooh. And I'm going to have to sample that now. Aren't I? Yep. So you, each time I'm sampling it, because then I can only go to that color in strength. So hopefully that makes sense. Not easy to describe. Back to the full thing, and you can see now it's got that sort of outline, and it's sort of working. It's not great at the moment. Um, where are we? Yeah, I suppose. Uh, yeah, you can't really rush these things, and it's it's tough, isn't it, in the game creation world? I'm gonna sample this color and go a bit lighter, and then do a highlight along here, highlight along here, a little bit wobbly maybe. But remember, I've got mirror on, so I don't want it too mirrored. But give it that sort of. That did not work. You can't do it twice. You can wobble once. You can't wobble again because then it adds a whole new highlight, doesn't it? There we go. And uh, even lighter now, right on the edge. And this is sort of a very simplistic way of doing it, but it's just about working. I'm going to sample that color, go a touch lighter, and make the end Like it's quite sharp. Does that make sense? So it's sort of really sharp at the end. It's sort of working. It's not brilliant, this is it? But it's going to look amazing soon. I do find, uh, and I think that's an, again why I couldn't get a job at Blizzard. Uh, someone was asking earlier, why didn't you get a job at Blizzard? But um, I'm a bit slower to figure out things. Um, so there I'm thinking, well, why does that not look right? And I'm still figuring it out. But Blizzard, they just do it and they'd be cool. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and they'd be cool. Enough said. Let's get it going up here like that, right on the very edge. There we go. And maybe just these sort of barbed bits. I remember that term last time. I think it was Corey S who said that's they're called barbs. I think, oh yeah, that's what they're called. <laughs> remember that from fishing now. Do we want a bit coming across here? But I'd have to turn the mirror off. I think I do. Yes. I'm just having a look what's going on. I mean, 
it just looks a bit too plain at the moment so I feel like it does need a bit of that sort of flint look so uh, a little bit less symmetry off I think there's a few questions coming through so I'll, I'll answer those in a second hold on a moment So a little bit brighter now. Is that working? Mm, I, I'm, maybe the flint look is not what I should be going for because I haven't got a reference image for that. I just fancy doing it. So maybe that's not the right look. Mm, is that is that working? We probably want one of these to be a bit brighter than the other. And one side to be darker. Now, which one, actually, um, that shouldn't have been that side because it's going to turn that way. So the tail's going to come here and that's going to go up there. So this will be more the front. So I'm going to start doing that a little bit now. Just across there. There we go. And this side a tiny bit darker. Have I got the screen on still? No, that's mixed. So that should. And then we'll shade some of these in just a touch. Bit of variation around the place. Mm, not sure my flint's working particularly well, is it? We shall see. Let's uh, put a bit of shading in here now. Just a bit of multiply. Just on that area there. Maybe down here a bit. Yeah, that's it's sort of. Mm, I don't know. Flint, maybe that was a bad idea. Actually, <laughs> should have gone metal. Uh, right. What are people saying? Uh, there's a few questions that I missed there. Uh, how do you export your UV map grids UVs into Photoshop? Been trying to figure that out for ages. Right, I think that is. I ought to save my image anyway, so save as. I need to. I'm going to do a save as because I can't remember. Yeah, I think it's bow color two actually, because so I've edited it slightly. I'll just actually. Oh no, I don't need to do that. I'll just save image. Save. In fact, I better save um, all images actually because there's two, isn't there? Uh, the flint, it doesn't look too bad there, but it's not quite worked on here, has it? I want to get some reference images of flint. Um, I just found your alpha brush tutorials. Thank you very much. Good, good stuff, little wolf. Well done. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, so what was I saying? Yes. Yeah, so image. Um, oh, maybe it's not under there then. Where is it these days? I thought, yes, you definitely can. Hmm. I'm just going to go to save and see what. Oh, no, oh, what am I thinking? Save as. Are there options under here? It used to be in there, I'm sure it did. Can anyone remember that? Where you um, find your UV layout? You mean, um, so if I go to, oh, it's maybe I have to be in, uh, okay, I'm gonna go to UV editing mode and select all and go to edit mode. Export UV layout, there it is. Yeah, so it's taking me ages, sorry about that. So export UV layout and then you get this. Oh, look, there's an overlap there. What's that then? Oh, have I overlapped something? Am I painting over it? I don't seem to be. Hmm. Oh, that's okay because they're on two different uh, textures, which is bad form, isn't it? Um, uh, saludos. I'm not sure what that means, actually. Desde Venezuela. <laughs> uh, thank you, Carlos uh, Milano. Uh, where are we? Just seeing what other questions there are. Quite a lot coming up actually. Oh, we've got lots more people on suddenly. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I'm almost, almost done, but I feel like I haven't done a very good job of the the flint at the bottom there. I'm just going to do a quick search. Flint. Flint. There we go. Flint. Uh, images. There we, oh, it's not how I was expecting. <laughs> but I suppose stylized flint is a bit different, isn't it? So look. So this is what we've got at the moment. I'm just going to put that in there and then I'll bring this down. So that's what I've got at the moment. It looks really different to what I've got. So maybe I should just take elements of that. There's a really cool one here, uh, which looks pretty good. Why am I thinking Flint anyway? That wasn't ever in the description. I'm probably going to get told off again for going too far. <laughs> Not that I got told off properly, but you know what I mean. Uh, they said that you've gone too far with these. We need them to be more cartoon-like. Uh, maybe I should just do a proper arrowhead. Let's go. Um, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'm going to go back to because the flint's fun, but actually I'm just going to go for more something like this. 
keep it simple Grant keep it simple right so let's bring this back up over here and let's go back to the stream what do we got um, these are Jungian personality types ah, you're a campaigner ah cool that's Charles McDonald a campaigner so is that someone uh, it, uh, is that different from what you had before Charles McDonald that would be interesting um, and let's just see anybody else done it Oh, uh, my stream just went weird there. Everybody alright? We're still here? Yes, see, yeah, people are telling me how to um, get in here. <laughs> Red Bull, I'm not sure, to be honest. <laughs> Export EVs, there we are, yeah. Everybody's telling me how to do this. <laughs> we need a sheriff. What's going on here? Uh, I'm just having a look. Uh, what is the best method to unwrap models? Um, I use Smart UV, but now I'm better just with selecting the face and unwrapping them manually. Uh, mark scene. So on this model, I'll, I'll show you that. If I go to, well, I'm in UV editing, so I can go to edit mode, and you can see all the red lines are seams. So I just mark them where you'd naturally, two shapes collide, as it were, and there'd be a natural seam, or somewhere hidden, like on the back of this bow, you can't really see there, but there is a seam down there, and that makes a difference. <laughs> um, at work watching, uh, nice one, uh, guy name. Hmm. California, like it. Just seeing what else people are saying. Ah, Robert Russell, you also got campaigner. Oh, you're a pr protagonist uh, into Pixel, just like me. Apparently, there's only a few of us. But then, uh, I suppose there's 177 people here. Uh, 179. It's, it's changing. Uh, and uh, I suppose there's going to be. Apparently, there's two percent uh, of the population are protagonists, so there should be four of us, ish, three, I suppose, three to four. <laughs> if I get my percentages right, uh, on here. So who else is the protagonist? There's one more of you out there. Obviously, that's uh, very rough, and it's, it'd be interesting to know if uh, we're all similar because we're into Blender, uh, and you're all watching this live stream, whether you're similar or not. In interesting. Uh, yeah, so um, I think um, I need to sort this out, don't I? So let's let's get back to this, shall we? Texture painting. And am I still on this object? Yes, I am. So let's uh, let's think about this. Uh, so I need to rub these out. So sample that and cut. Oh, I'm on multiply. So let's give it a that. Mix. Sample that. Mix. Put the strength up. And look at that. A rubber. People say, is there a rubber? Well, you sample a color that's close, and that's your rubber. To be fair, that doesn't look too bad, to be honest, does it? But I feel like it needs maybe a bit more of a line down the middle. So what you can do, remember, this is going to be angled this way, so it's going to rotate um, this direction, like that. <laughs> I can't show it because I haven't got the, Oh, I have. Because my webcam's on this. So it's going to go that way, that way, down there. And so the tail is going that way. And the <laughs> it's, I'm not doing very well at explaining this, am I? Um, how do you personality, do the personality test? So someone said it. Uh, what was it again? Anybody remind me? What's it called? 16 personalities or something? Oh, where is it? Oh, someone someone remind me uh, where where the personality. Maybe someone could put a link. if You c You might not be able to post link. Maybe that's a problem on here anyway. Um, sorry, where were we? Uh, so, uh, oh yes, I'm painting this. So uh, this will be angled this way. So this will be in the shade and that will be in the highlight. So I have made this slightly um, lighter, but I'm going to do the whole thing again. So I'm going to go F and just do that on one side. No, nope, that's that's too strong, isn't it? That's too strong. Do that on one side again. I might even, just for the sake of doing some different, I wouldn't really bother doing this much, but the fall off, I can uh, bring this curve up a little bit more like that. Uh, and then if I do that, it's a harder line here. Uh, just to do that once more, about there, nope, about there. There we go. So now it looks like a bit of a line down the middle. That sort of makes sense. It will make more sense in a second honestly. Make that a little bit brighter around the edges and then uh, get the multiply brush and uh, make the other side darker. And you see, suddenly it looks like there's some shading. Genius! Grant, you're amazing. How do you do these things? Uh, Morty <laughs> Elkja. Love your content. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so uh, no URLs. Is that the problem? So if you could just type the, um, the title of the thing, that'd be cool. Um, Oh, uh, it was in the general chat, so it's probably not a great place because it's probably up the stream somewhere as people keep chatting um, of these things. Right, I'm going to sample this and go back to mix. And 
a small brush, sample that. And let's brush too big. As if the light's being caught on this bit here. Still looks a bit flinty, doesn't it? And then just sort of around there, sort of making sense, isn't it? There we go, that's looking kind of cool, isn't it? It doesn't look particularly metallic. It look, does still look a little bit like flint, doesn't it? Um, which, I don't know why, I just, I just feel like that goes with this sort of oldie style of bow like this. 16 personalities, thank you very much, Interpixels, and Robert Russell and Combi Chan. <laughs> Um, can anybody see this message? I asked a question, but it wasn't seen. Sorry about that, Moby. Where is your question? Um, there was a lot of people suddenly chatting there, so I missed your question. Can you just repost your question? Um, it's um, If you have a question, I think I put that in my... No, I forgot to put it this time, my rolling title at the bottom there. Um, uh, which, uh, yeah, if you at Grant Abbott, uh, so my YouTube name, uh, then uh, it will highlight orange, and that's the ones I sort of... A pinpoint uh, if there's lots of chat going on then I know they're a question of me um, yeah um, ah hello uh, so uh, yeah it has to be at Grant Abbott unfortunately rather than at Grant have you ever tried using glossy node or a metal shader for hand painted objects you can do it um, but uh, you'd then want to bake it and then it become a diffuse so you generally you just don't and it's all about uh, really actually an emission at one that's what a viewer node is so this is all and that's what makes it render instantly. Uh, emission node at once, uh, at one. And yeah, uh, like I say, it renders because there's no shadows then. It, it, it doesn't take into account any of the shadows and stuff. Um, where are we? Uh, okay, so um, almost there with this. Uh, I just want to do a tiny bit more at uh, the bottom here, just to darken that a bit, darken these areas. And that looks okay, but it sort of looks a bit weird. Oh, thank you very much, Shane Pulcher. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Simple message, but I love it. That's really good of you. Uh, once again, it's really... Oh, my thing just went wrong there. Uh, much, much appreciated. Did you use the default fall-off? I'm not sure what that means, actually. The default fall-off? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I was using the default. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the fall off, yeah. It used to be called uh, Curve, and that's why I wasn't aware. Um, yes, I usually just use the default. I, I like this one as well. When I want it sharp, I use that one and that one, and really occasionally that one. But generally speaking, I bring it across and down to there, just so it's got a bit of fall off. Uh, but that one, that one, and then the one I just sort of mentioned to make sort of a whole area more solid. I was wondering if you could do a tutorial for nodes and how... Yes, I'm going to you. Uh, to use the curvature maps to add color to cavities, pl please. Uh, not many tutorials are around for they explain it well. Yes, I'm going to do uh, Node School again soon for 2.8. Uh, I thought that'd be a good one. I'm still sort of working on the other things that I'm, uh, what's it called? What, um, the exercises, so I'll probably be doing a bit of those as well here and there. Uh, right, we need a notch, don't we, in here? So let's have a, a notch down the bottom here. Simple notch, just make sure that's working. Might be a little bit dark, but that's all right. Let's sample this color now. And uh, am I on multiply still? I think so, yes, so mix. Actually, I'll sample this, no, this one, this one here, there. It needs to be a touch brighter, so it sort of really sort of stands out. But going across there like that, uh, I'll answer those questions in a second. And there we go. So we've got a notch in it, and we'll just have a little bit of a dink here as well. Notches and dinks. Um, do you ever swap to and from the pressure sensitivity on the strength and thickness, or uh, just manage the brush size? I do that, yes, so I'll turn those off every now and again. Uh, more at the beginning, at this point, uh, rarely. But yes, I, on, on and off. Um, it's tough to describe when. I can't really think of when I do it, but I know I do it. <laughs> um, don't you think the arrow's head if it's a stone, should be tied to the stick. You're so right with that. This is a magical one. <laughs> yeah, it should do, shouldn't it? I think it's going to be okay for an icon, but it, I feel like, yeah, it does need a bit of sort of rope or something there. You're so right. That's an annoying thing to say. It needs something there, though. I might paint in something as if it's been... 
I don't know. We're going to figure that one out. <laughs> That's very annoying, Vinod, Mera. Uh, you are very right. <laughs> How frustrating. Didn't think of that thing. Uh, right, so multiply. Uh, yep, we're right with a shade. So we're going about here. Remember, this is going to be turned outside, so the sun's going to be coming from that direction sort of thing. So I'm just sort of gently drawing, building it up. Hopefully that makes sense what I'm doing there. And then just go a bit lighter and highlight. Oh, I'm still on multiply. Yep, there we go. Simple. It's sort of a stone arrow, yep. That's the thinking anyway. But yeah, it does need something there. Oh, that is so annoying. <laughs> it's held on with pine pitch. That's it, you see. I feel like, do we need something? Do I need to change the color of this? Oh, my... My touch sensitivity turned itself on for some reason. Um, uh, where are I? I don't want to go too detailed. Exactly that M1 SMR. Thank you very much. I think actually we are there, aren't we? I haven't really done the background, but I'm just going to finish it off. I'm going to save the texture image, save, and save the file, save as, and give it a, the, a plus one. So that's what I always do. I, um, so it was, it was blend icon three. I'll just put a little plus there. So I've got just three and now I've got four uh, and it's always the one with the highest number that was the last one and I can go back a few. That's uh, just something about how I save. Uh, you could drill hole and use horse glue. Exactly. That's what I was thinking as way as, as well as way. <laughs> uh, I know it's not much, but when I uh, can, I like to donate my way uh, of showing appreciation. Thank you, Shane Pelcher. It is really appreciated. It, uh, it doesn't have to be much. Uh, it makes a massive difference to me, believe me. And thanks to all those that support me by watching an advert and all those sort of things. Uh, it, like I say, uh, um, I'm very uh, nice and comfortable with how things are going, hence why my tutorials are all free. Um, I have been talking to some people about paid for courses and stuff, and then I could put more effort into them, I suppose. I'm still not sure whether I'm going to do it or not, but lots of people are contacting me, loads of people. There are one, there's one company that I'm thinking I might work with because um, they seem quite sorted and have a good system, a support system there as well. So they've got lots of people that they pay to support you when you buy the course. And I think that could be really useful for many people and just go that extra level. And let me know what you think about that, people out there, and whether I should do that or try and keep it as free as possible. Uh, most people probably say free as possible because they're worried about having to pay for something. I'm pr I do appreciate that. Not everybody can afford it and I want it. I want my tutorials to be seen by as many people as possible because I'm really arrogant like that. <laughs> no, it's because um, I I want there to be no barriers to uh, enable people to be artists and enjoy 3D art. Uh, just like blend, the Blender Institute um, Foundation, either way, <laughs> whatever they call themselves. Um, but uh, they do such an amazing thing and they are supported uh, by funding and so forth and they manage to employ people. So if they can do it, why can't I sort of thing? That's what I think, even though they do a much better job than me, obviously. Uh, but yeah, I think you know what I'm saying, Daniel. Okay, so we've uh, pretty much there. So I'm just going to file save again, but save as a new copy. So I'm going to make a few changes and just to the position and the render. So I'm going to go to layout. Here's my camera mode. So I've got everything selected. I'm just going to rotate by the Y, I think it is. is it y? No, it's at the X. Uh, and just put it to there, and then I'm pretty much there, aren't I? Any thoughts from anybody? So I'll just deselect all, do a quick render. Uh, oh, I'm rendering in cycles. Why am I rendering in cycles? What's the point of that? And I'm rendering the Taurus there. Don't need that. So let's go back to Eevee, because uh, you'll see, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll show you a couple of things, because you might be interested. <laughs> you might be interested. So F12 to render, and let's bring, and that rendered instantly. So point, uh, not even a second. And we've got this. I'll make it a little bit smaller by zooming out. Uh, and I'm quite happy with that. Um, let's do the same thing in cycles. Okay. So render in cycles, render engine cycles. And oh, I should have done a new slot. Let's get that up again. Window. Uh, where's the render window? Oh, I have to go to render. Now. So render. Uh, view render. Why? This is only taking a second. Why didn't I? <laughs> uh, now we change it to slot two, don't we? That was uh, slot two. And then render again uh, with cycles, okay? So rendering with cycles in slot two. And it takes a f it took 
two seconds that did or oh, ages but uh, the reason it's doing it so quick let's get back to texture paint is because it's going through this emission node and emission nodes it doesn't have to calculate any light on it just goes in and what you see here is what you get it's not uh, there's no influence of lighting okay so let's go back to where was I layout mode and where's my render um, oh blender renders gone to this that's weird isn't it uh, render render result okay and if we look at slot one and slot two actually there is a tiny bit of difference maybe I didn't uh, on the arrowhead on the tail I probably had the not emission node on what is that BSDF uh, so there we go useful stuff for you there I'm sure uh, but yeah so that's the only difference but can you see the rest of the bow absolutely no difference so rendering in cycles rendering in Eevee exactly the same because it's through an emission node anyway how do we think what um, how do we think what do we think of the low poly bow then I feel like it needs a bit more shading here and here and a bit more shading in there but actually it's only an icon so what am I worried about don't be silly and don't overdo it but yeah I feel like it needs uh, maybe a highlight on the <laughs> I'm just going over the top now. I want it to look absolutely incredible. Uh, can you see actually the arrow has a bit of light influence? So yes. Uh, and let's go to the shading. And oh, what? Whoa, big white background. So if I click on the arrow, uh, let's go back to this view here. So you can see that's going through the BSDF. So it's being really slightly affected by the light. Uh, so if I change that to emission node, you can see now the arrow in its full glory without any shadows. Let's bring this back. And now it's, it looks a bit flatter, actually. I probably need to put a bit more shading in there. What do people think? Let me know. There is also, um, I don't know how it's appearing on your screens, actually, but you've also got other options, which you can do whilst the render thing's open. Uh, but it's going to hide when I do that, isn't it? I need to change this to render view or somewhere, don't I? Uh, let's change this one here to render view. I'm just going to press N to get rid of that panel uh, and go to uh, where is it? Uh, image editor and change this to render. Render result. There we go. And now I can always change things a little bit with the color management. So I'm going medium contrast. It's right in the middle. But if I go high contrast, we get a high contrast look, which I think looks a little bit more rich and what we're going for. So that's probably how I keep it. Although it's, I don't know whether that's coming across on your screen well. Uh, what are people saying anyway? Um, <laughs> Shane Pelcher, let me know when it drops. Take my money. <laughs> uh, um, just having a look at questions. Uh, probably you should think about a Udemy course uh, about low poly and paint your items. I think a lot of people would like it. Uh, we all appreciate your work, sir. You're amazing. Thank you. Uh, this is from Vinod Mirror and the Entertainment 47. Uh, Amrit Naypan Pound. <laughs> I would love as free as possible, yep, as not many from our part of the world can pay. Exactly. Uh, but I can understand your needs as well. It's a tricky one, really, because do I really need that extra money? <laughs> It's always nice, isn't it? And you always, you know, I suppose it's sort of, you never know what's going to happen in the future. And uh, uh, I'm not really thinking much about pensions and stuff like that. And I probably ought to be in case, you know, I, I might, something might happen to me. Uh, and therefore I can't do this anymore for some reason. So you, you do have to be a bit careful. Um, and uh, you, uh, do you know what I'm saying? Hopefully you know what I'm saying. Uh, Chris Stone, 18, 1989. I think you should uh, make a paid course. Why not? You've given us hundreds of free educational content. I wouldn't think differently of you. It's really kind of people to say this. It's really great. Uh, uh, two people don't like me. How uh, how could that be? <laughs> how could you downvote his content? I think it might be because people... Uh, um, and I, I appreciate it, actually. I appreciate people putting a thumbs down if they don't like the content. Uh, one, because it makes me think, oh, well, that stream obviously wasn't as good as others, perhaps. But also, maybe some people are, um, are thinking, uh, I don't want live streams, I want tutorials. And then it just sort of gives me an idea. Um, and yeah, so every comment is useful to me. Um, but obviously, I like the positive ones more than anything. <laughs> what about a, uh, making the ends of the feathers a bit narrower? Oh, do you mean the actual very tips? I kind of like the chunkiness. <laughs> What would, the look, um, what would this look like placed over the medallion thing uh, in the concept art? Well, I've, um, 
I had to change the medallion, but that's what it's looking like over the medallion at the moment. I'm just going to zoom into that so it rotates around that. But uh, I'm changing it a lot because they didn't want it to look like that. Uh, they wanted it sort of uh, less intense. It's, you, this is sort of very brushed gold look, uh, quite intense, and they didn't want that sort of style. So I won't be using that anyway. Uh, it took Zacharias's course on Udemy and it was really cheap on sale for ten dollars. Wow, hey, that's pretty good. Uh, it was really good and I'm able to replay it as many times as I want. I recommend it highly. So there we go. Uh, there is a link to that, an affiliated link in the description. Do you know, um, I've made a bit of money through affiliated links. So um, maybe I should be the sort of free person and then the more detailed content with Zacharias's course an hour and 40 and I think my last one was an hour and 30 of this so that's model and texture um, so for this bow it's about three to uh, probably about three hours generally speaking because I wouldn't be chatting away all the time uh, I missed the whole stream <laughs> you can always watch it back uh, it's just YouTube I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I can take those personality tests, get a couple results. Yeah, depending on... That's the thing, isn't it? Uh, the mediator, I think I might have got that another time. But, you know, I think my personality has changed over the last couple of years a little bit. Um, I'm less stressed because I'm not teaching as much, to be honest. Uh, yes, weirdly, uh, possibly a red-green contrast to separate the two. That's exactly what the background is. It's a red and green background. So that's what we'll be doing. Uh Hold on. <laughs> what are people saying? <laughs> I like my feathers chunky. <laughs> uh, pay courses for more advanced users. Maybe I wouldn't have paid when I was starting out, but now I probably would. Maybe thirty to fifty dollars. Yeah, maybe for something advanced. Um, yeah, perhaps I should go down that route because I don't tend to do much advanced stuff on YouTube because not many people can access it anyway. So, if the, it, but just through ability, so maybe that should be where I go with the advanced stuff perhaps um uh so lots of people saying a udemy course and things so maybe maybe that's the way for me to go i've got to be careful not to um not be able to do as much um uh of my youtube stuff though i wouldn't want to suddenly cut down on the youtube and only be doing do you know, does that make sense because i still want to be there for everybody <laughs> because that's uh, what am i a protagonist uh, which is uh, that's my personality type in the test hence why i do all this stuff for free probably <laughs> But the others don't have my voice, is that what it is? <laughs> uh, hand painting that involves a real brush and physical painting. I, you know, I can do it, but um, I just find it very messy. <laughs> should I upload my stuff somewhere? Uh, I just do it as a hobby. And should I bother to upload things from your tutorial because they are practically not my ideas? Uh, yes, it depends what you want to do. Uh, if you want to get out there or just say, look what I've done, people, which is quite fun at times and get some feedback, uh, then that's good. If you want to get some jobs, sometimes uh, people looking for work will, uh, uh, you know, just look at and you can say, this is what I can do. So have it ready if you want to. Um, but generally speaking, um, you want to shy away from using people's tutorials as your um, portfolio, uh, generally speaking. I think a good option would be to take more sponsorships, NordVPN and whatnot. Yeah, I've, I've thought about that. I've shied away from it a bit, but I might start doing that. So maybe that's the easy way. Um, yeah. Sorry to hear that, Corey S. Uh, uh, you indeed have uh, the most pleased voice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, a Kickstarter course. Mm, interesting. I haven't really thought much about that, but maybe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's quite nice to have a chat like this, isn't it? I'm sort of chilling out. So I've, I've finished the finished the job and just chatting and uh, chilling out. Practice is the best way to learn. Maybe a uh, recurring viewer challenge would be fun. Well, we do have the competition, uh, the uh, monthly competition on Discord, and we do the competition results uh, live on this channel. We did that yesterday, and there was some great artwork. I'm thinking of trying to get some prizes for that. I need, a, I need some sort of helper who can go out there looking for prizes for me. Uh, uh, looking for um, sponsored prizes. And they can just email lots of different people and say, we want prizes for Gabbit Media. Um, uh, will the high contrast selection apply to the texture output or do you need to bait to that? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. That's only for rendering. Yeah, very good point, uh, Combi Chan. Uh, so uh, if I wanted to do that, I'd actually have to change the contrast of my 
actual texture here and you take that into Photoshop or something to do that really. Obviously you can do that in the output of your uh, game engine as well. Uh, hello Davey Coles. <laughs> Uh, does your live stream here follow a regular schedule? Uh, if I do a live stream, it'll be between four and six, roughly. Uh, generally, I'll always try and do one on Friday, uh, but occasionally I'm just doing extra bits here and there. So like today, I wanted to finish this off, and I thought it'd be good fun to do a live stream. So um, if I am doing one, it will be around four till six. Uh, okay, just see what everybody else is saying. As long as the price is reasonable, provide a really good course that will make in terms of volume uh, uh, make up the difference in the amount up front. Yeah, um, yeah. The, I think yeah, reasonable. I certainly would be a low price if I were doing one, unless I team up with someone else and then, then they're setting prices and things. Uh, we'll see. Uh, cool. What are your thoughts on doing game art reviews, like from popular games, as something to aspire to create? Uh, so when you say game art reviews, Naylon, what do you mean? Uh, like from popular games. Oh, so you mean, uh, I think I've seen someone do that actually, where they just talk about the art of a certain game. Uh, on, so I, I'd sort of be chatting about it and uh, thinking what my thoughts are. Is that what you mean, Nalon? Uh, that would be quite fun actually, I might do that. <laughs> where is Frank indeed? Um, part 2.2. So if I get to your course on Udemy, it'll be... Uh, I'm not sure what he's saying there, but uh, once I start getting more proficient with Blender, becoming very advanced, I'd pay you uh, for your courses. Oh, there we go. Uh, thank you very much, T-H-A. Everything you do is awesome. Can't wait for the next stream. Cool stuff. Yeah, my next stream, um, I'll definitely be doing one on Friday. I haven't uh, got anything particular to stream before then, so I might just be doing the one on Friday. Yeah, I probably will now, uh, because I probably need to get out a video, of some a tutorial video of some description between now and then so um yeah so that's how we'll be doing it um zacharias's right zacharias reinhardt's one is on teachable or something like that there's a link in the description i think there's a link in the description and it's an affiliated link so if you buy it you'll be supporting me thank you very much uh, tha for that i really appreciate all the support that i get from everybody um so really good of you um a 3D printed model of a stack of words that forms the sentence, get back to work. <laughs> that could be a competition prize. Someone did say they were going to send me a uh, 3D printer to review. I'm still waiting for it though. <laughs> Honestly, Garant is such a nice guy. He never says no to anyone. I do my best to respond to everybody, but it's getting a bit more difficult now because uh, the channel is becoming more and more popular and I'm trying to respond to every comment and it's, it's getting busy. Uh, I need uh, to, uh, well, I suppose sometimes I'm just liking comments rather than commenting back, whereas I used to comment back to everything and say thanks at least, uh, but it's just too much now. Uh, I suppose all this free content will help drive sales to um, advanced courses indeed, yep, that's true. Maybe some mo motion tracking and compositing menu uh, and CGI mixed in the real, real world, that would be quite fun, wouldn't it? So maybe uh, along those lines would be cool. <laughs> Uh, the yes man. Yeah, I suppose that's it. I think that's the the protagonist um, personality type as well, isn't it, Nalan? <laughs> Grant is kind, not nice. Interesting. Starring Grant, Helen. <laughs> um, uh, you said you are more used to doing more realistic characters. Uh, will we ever see a stream tutorial of you showing us more ris mere, more realistic like characters? Maybe I don't mean that with realistic. I mean sort of more uh, less cartoony. Um, so not quite realist hyper realism, um, and not quite anime, uh, not quite cartoon. I sort of get somewhere in the middle, bit bit stylized, but still got sort of realistic looks. If that makes sense, that's my um, niche. I think. Uh, but I, I like going over to the stylized stuff, actually, because it's good fun. I like this bow here. <laughs> um, it's weird that I watch Grant and other artists when doing my work. Uh, I'm doing, I'm doing a, Ru, a, a Ruger rifle, and I'm listening about a bow. <laughs> End up with a gun bow, maybe. Uh, right, well, uh, I think that's probably enough for me. Um I think you know, the Sculpt January 2019 models were his best works. Yeah, that's I suppose that's my style really. And I'm trying to develop more 
hence why I'm going away from that. Um, but if I, um, in fact, today I was working on, yeah, you know, then chat, chat through this. <laughs> I'll just quickly save this, uh, save work, and all my textures are saved. But oh, that's already that's saved. Let's just go to texture paint. Make sure everything's saved. Yeah, we're all good. What I was just working on. And this was a client job, and it's quite an interesting discussion to have actually about working for clients and who you shouldn't take on as a client and who you should take on. So here we go. Here's the torso that I was doing. Uh, so there we go, doing a sculpt. So that's what I mean by realistic characters and stuff. So I was sculpting this, and I was thinking of doing this as a live stream, and I thought, no, I won't. I'll just uh, sculpt it and get it done. Uh, and um, I took the job on. <laughs> And I was thinking to myself, I shouldn't be taking this job on. But I think uh, what I was thinking was I could just um, do a simple, uh, it would be good fun to practice my sculpting because I haven't done a, uh, I've done stylized sculpting, but I haven't done realistic sculpting for a while. So get back into it, do a torso like this, really go for it uh, and have some fun. So it took me a few hours, uh, maybe two to three hours, somewhere like that. And I sent it to... Uh, the client and they said it doesn't look anything like the reference image. I'll get the reference image up so you can have a look This is interesting. I I, I'm not mean to be rude to this person and it's actually my fault So I'll just make that clear. Uh, I'm just going to save my Atlas Empire stuff and Where's my reference image? Yeah, there we go. So here's the reference image. How can I bring it in here like that? Go to layout mode. Oh, actually I've got them in here already. There we go. So I was using that in the background to try and get it more precise because he said it doesn't look anything like the reference image. I think that looks like the reference image. How, I mean, how close do you want? <laughs> I really worked hard. Um, yeah, I mean, torso anatomy is quite tough. So I appreciate it's not precisely like here. There's the muscle going down there. Maybe I could have highlighted that muscle a bit more or something. But he said, uh, and I think, now this is a lesson to be learned about uh, what clients to take on and uh, thank you very much all those saying uh, nice work and stuff I appreciate it more amazing work yeah um, but uh, the la there was a language barrier and I could see that from the start and I thought that could be really difficult because um, you must with clients make sure you understand exactly what they want and they wanted a perfect copy of this whereas I thought they wanted something like this <laughs> <laughs> and obviously in the language barrier, uh, that wasn't clear. And I don't know if I could have got that much closer. I mean, it's pretty close, isn't it? That's, is it close? I mean, there's the back end and the front end. I think that's pretty close. <laughs> Maybe that six much is too much on the front. Yeah, it's tough because um, if you look around, uh, that the lighting's different for one. So this is very harsh light from the top. Maybe it's a bit too, yeah, maybe, maybe a bit too six-packy. I was modeling on myself, you see. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe this is, yeah. Uh, <laughs> client, it looks like an alien. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm glad, I'm glad some people are saying how much closer you get, get but that's good. Um, uh, I should, uh, Chance McDonald, I should be doing sort of, yeah, uh, fixed price or hourly or whatever it is. But, um, when did you ta scan your torso? That's what I should have. Just scan my torso and then, uh, <laughs> then job done. <laughs> exactly that. So, <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah. So uh, you can see that. Um, yeah, clients uh, be a bit careful. And I should have been really clear from the start. But I knew there was a language barrier, and I just thought, well, I fancy doing some sculpting of a torso. So I'll just have a go. I know there's about sort of 50% chance of me not getting the result and even getting paid. And that's what happened. So I got a bit unlucky with that one. But I should have known really uh, because I'm experienced enough with clients to know that that's not always, you know, making, making sense anyway. <laughs> uh, I, I was careful in terms of um, I didn't send them the model. I sent them a picture. Uh, so I said, is this what you're looking for? Uh, well, not quite that, but um, oh, here's the result. I'll send the final file once you um, <laughs> uh, uh, once you pay me. Uh, and that's when they sent back saying, it's not what I'm after, basically. Uh, it, their lumps and bumps are in the wrong place. <laughs> is what I get to. And again, it's, uh, it's not their fault. Um, I don't think they were a troll. I think they generally 
uh, thought it wasn't quite right and we lost it in the communication I think and I don't blame them but I do blame myself definitely um, uh, I recently watched Flip Normal's video about retopology and they said it's good to use reference images of retopo what do you think oh yeah yeah so yeah when you're doing retopology uh, look at a reference of someone else's topology work yes definitely oh definitely that's a that's a must <laughs> find the, the client's real face and sculpt it on top of it and suddenly it's amazing <laughs> um, they didn't say anything about colour but maybe uh, yeah the buttocks are slightly out I suppose yeah it's a bit too broad here isn't it I mean they're looking closely um, but um, the price that they would uh, they were going to give me $70 for it um, so three hours work that would be fair, a fair price it's a bit low uh, for what I charge these days to be fair um, but um, it's um, about £25 an hour is what I try and get so um, $70 is a little bit under and it's only dollars as well um, so it is my body yes yeah I do. <laughs> not quite um, they haven't got quite as low a body fat percentage as that <laughs> anyway so um, yeah, it is a steal, isn't it? So I was, I, I said it's it's much lower than I would do, but I wanted to do some sculpting anyway. And I thought um, it's good to see you, Interpixel. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, so um, I just went for it, and it would have been a steal. So I thought they'd probably appreciate that and think, oh, that's a good model. I'm happy with that, and I would have uh, got seventy dollars, and that would have been great. But in fact, <laughs> I got nothing. But I got to chat about it with my friends. <laughs> there we go. Uh, a barrel pack. Uh, my body is ready. <laughs> uh, okay, so one last question from uh, Leems, is it? I'm not sure. Um, what is a good workflow for using Dine Topper with constant detail? Like how low should I start with and how should I, high should I go with my details? It's really um, difficult. Um, so I won't say this work, but uh, uh, yeah, let's do a, a separate model over here. So um, if we start with a cube, and we subdivide it five times, so control five. I always think um, and apply that. That's um, and apply that. Wait, apply. Ah, apply. I always think uh, that's a nice starting resolution. Yep, and then uh, start getting your, um, and that's usually, let's go to sculpt mode with this. And I'll just check that I'm on that. Yep, so I'm pulling things around, and it's nice, it's, it's all right to get a shape with that, and we can use our remesh. Uh, let's do a remesh of point uh, one meter the remesh I think so point one is a little bit um, l um, high so I'd probably go point zero um, five or something let's try that and see what the detail and that's again that's about the right resolution to start sculpting around if you want to use Dine Topo and remember I, this is a scale of two by two or something isn't it I can't remember uh, the default cube uh, let's Dine Topo Dine Topo it up and uh, Let's start with 15 and just see what that's like. And that's exactly, oh, that's exactly the same. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's a bit more detailed. So somewhere around there. In fact, it doesn't, it feels like Dine Topper is not on. It's not, it's stretching. That's because I've got the grab brush. <laughs> what an idiot. Let's do it with the snake hook tool. There we go. Okay, so 15 is a bit low because then otherwise you end up not being able to um, sculpt. Uh, so let's go to 20. It does depend on the size of your model because this is uh, pixels. I don't really understand what they mean by pixels. PX, anyway, maybe it's not even pixels. That's too low as well, isn't it? 30. So I'm just... So, oh, I thought, that was, oh, I thought it was constant detail. That's why it's going rubbish, isn't it? Let's try 15 again. 15. Ah, there we go. Now that's better, isn't it? Um, so yeah, that's about the right size, I would say. About 15. That tends to be 10 or 15 where I start it, but somewhere around this sort of detail. Um, yeah. And that's about the right place to start. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, thank you, Corey S, for shouting out constant detail at me. <laughs> uh, where are we? So uh, um, I have one pack. Lots of people talking about their six pack. I <laughs> uh, that's uh, a big um, choosing beggars if he argues about uh, $70. Indeed, yeah, it was a bit frustrating. But... Um, so they just um, it depends where they're from, and obviously, um, like I said, with the language, but I think um, well, 
uh, they didn't have the money and they and 70 was as far as they could go sort of thing i think they were pushing it then so they wanted exactly what they wanted and, you know so uh, again my it's my fault it's not their fault at all and i must stress that it's my fault um for not being clear taking the job on and so forth and that's why i'm neither here nor there i was thinking of doing it as a live stream you see uh, of doing some sculpting uh, but then i just thought um it, i had i had a starting base mesh so i thought actually i'm, I'm not going to do it as a, as a live stream but anyway yeah. um uh, games can't handle high poly models no indeed oh i see so uh um uh, yeah i mean i might i might put this on sketchfab maybe and try and sell it on sketchfab and see if anybody wants to buy my beautiful torso not my i mean it's my property but it's not my torso not my you can't buy this can't buy this <laughs> um anyway uh a roman breastplate yeah that'd be quite cool roman breastplate wouldn't it yeah i mean you could do that can you break it bake it on for a roman breast let's see there's loads you can do exactly now those are some interesting love handles uh yeah actually that's a good point they are too prominent aren't they yeah you're right that's what see i needed you guys around to tell me what was going on yeah they're too much he's does he's been doing a lot of lateral um lifts or whatever they are <laughs> but you want to buy my torso well it's not for sale because i need it to hold my head up <laughs> uh is this for a game? Uh, no, this is just a, a job I was um, asked to do. It's probably for a 3D pr printed model. I never asked what the output would be, actually. I should have asked loads more questions, really. I think it's a little bit out down the side here, to be honest, with the muscles as well. <laughs> Does Quadflow Remesh have cons for using it? Uh, uh, let me think. I mean, it, yes, because it's uniform detail over your mesh. Uh, that's the only downside, really. If you get, choose the right resolution, then it's a really great thing. But sometimes you might want higher resolution on your face, maybe, than the rest of the model to keep the polys down. Uh, <laughs> he skipped arms, legs, and head training. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, let's um, uh, let's call it a day there, I think. That was good fun. And uh, nice chat at the end there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh so uh yep so next stream is on friday from four to six where i'll be continuing the character sculpt uh for raymond's character um i'll probably have a chat with him before then actually and sort of figure a few things out about the costume costume <laughs> you know what i mean the clothing and stuff uh yeah uh so uh let me know in the comments below if you've got any thoughts about anything uh or um want to chat through things uh, if you want to chat through things then discord server is the best place i'm a little bit struggling for time at the moment to chat to people but um if you just want to say hello i'll say hello back <laughs> as i do or you want me to look at your portfolio i might find time to do that uh, then that's cool uh iron pumping game that's what it's for yeah <laughs> polybloom uh okay uh anyway uh so thank you all for watching yeah i wanted to flex my torso on you indeed and that's very true uh yeah so uh and thanks for all your support as always thanks for watching advert thanks for those people that donated once again it was max and chance mcdonald and others i've forgotten but i really appreciate it i, I do apologize i shouldn't say names because i'll highlight the fact that i've forgotten who um <laughs> donated but it really is appreciated uh, so thanks ever so much to everybody so i will see you next time if uh, you want to join me on friday between four and six uh gmt uh see you on